Welcome to Foodlink's basic food safety training for backpack programs. In this presentation, we will cover basic food safety principles so that you can be informed as to how to protect the health and safety of the children you serve. After completing this presentation, you will need to complete the online quiz for backpack programs and obtain a score of 80% or higher to pass. There are practice questions throughout the presentation to help prepare you for the quiz. A brief overview of Foodlink. To fulfill our mission of ending hunger and leveraging the power of food to build a healthier community, Foodlink works with more than 500 partner organizations and houses a variety of programs. You are probably aware that Foodlink distributes dented cans which we call retail damaged product. What you might not know is that we both receive donated food and buy food, including shelf-stable items and fresh produce. The food comes from local farmers, individual and corporate donors, the USDA, community gardens, and a variety of food vendors. This food then goes out to serve our community through mobile pantries, food pantries, soup kitchens, shelters, group homes, daycares, schools, farm stands, and corner stores. Nutrition and the Emergency Food System One in five children in Foodlink service area is food insecure. The inability to know where one's next meal is coming from can have a serious impact on one's health and well-being. Good nutrition is critical to good health and success at school. As a member of the Backpack Program, we encourage you to provide nutritious offerings. My Plate illustrates the government's recommendation for a healthy diet. My Plate is made up of the five food groups, vegetables, fruits, grains, protein, and dairy. It's important to eat from all five food groups each day. To meet these guidelines, we recommend offering items such as 100% fruit juice, canned fruits and juice or water, canned veggies with no salt added, cereals low in sugar and made with whole grains, lean proteins such as tuna or chicken, and low-fat dairy products such as our shelf-stable 1% milk. Let's review. What are the five food groups? Fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. Foodborne illness. What is it? Where is it? And how does it spread? According to the CDC, there are 250 different foodborne diseases. Foodborne illness can be caused by chemical hazards such as cleansers and sanitizers, biological hazards such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites, or physical hazards such as glass, bones, and metal shavings. Contamination of food can be odorless, tasteless, and may not affect the appearance of the food. Every person is susceptible to foodborne illness. Even though many foodborne illnesses go unreported, one in six Americans get sick every year, leading to 128,000 hospitalizations and 3,000 deaths. Individuals who are malnourished and or have weakened immune systems are even more susceptible to foodborne illness. Such vulnerable popul populations include the elderly, children, and the ill and infirm. 36% of the clients served through Foodlink are under the age of 18. As a backpack program, you are serving one of these vulnerable populations, so proper food safety is key. Common symptoms of foodborne illness include nausea, vomiting, fever, and diarrhea. These can be mild to life-threatening. The top three reasons foodborne illness occurs in the U.S. are improper hand washing, not cooking foods to correct temperature, 
and holding foods at incorrect temperatures. Proper hand washing is the number one way to help prevent against foodborne illness. Encourage proper, frequent hand washing for all staff and volunteers that handle backpack food. What is an example of a biological hazard that can cause foodborne illness? The correct answer is B, bacteria. Remember, biological hazards include bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Which of the following is the number one reason for the spread of foodborne illness? The correct answer is D, improper hand washing. Now that we've learned what causes foodborne illness, let's discuss ways we can prevent foodborne illness from occurring. As we discussed earlier, Foodlink receives food from a var variety of places, including donations and purchase items. Please be aware that Foodlink distributes shelf-stable product that can be up to six months past its expiration date. This is important to keep in mind when determining quantities for your inventory. Safe food starts with proper handling and storing of ingredients and supplies. Here's a very important part. You should check the condition of all incoming food, including items you receive from Foodlink. If you are receiving our pre-packed backpack bags, you do not need to check all pre-packed bags, but you should spot check a few. Sometimes items are damaged in transit. Contact Foodlink if you notice issues. Another best practice is to mark and receive a receiving date on all received product. This will allow you to easily recognize the product you need to push out first. We call this practice FIFO, first in, first out. If you are unable to label and date each container, another way to implement stock rotation is to label the shelving with use first signage or temporary signage stating the date it was received. Each program can, can determine which stock rotation method works best for them. Let's review some best practices when it comes to safe receiving. Never leave food outside and unsupervised. Always have someone to meet and receive the delivery. During receiving, you can review your order, ensure all items are accounted for and in good condition. Then promptly store your items properly. Furthermore, never leave food by garbage containers. Many cans that are received from Foodlink or through donations you may receive have dents. It's important for you to know what is a safe dent and what is not. If there is an unsafe dent, this could allow air or microorganisms to enter the can, allowing bacteria and spores to form. Any can with a dent on the seam where the side and end meet, one that is sharp, swollen, or bulging, rusted, or leaking, is considered unsafe. One good tip to remember is, if you cannot stack it, then it should probably be discarded. A safe dent would be one that is smooth, not on the seam, and does not compromise the can juncture. Let's review some more examples of unsafe can dents. The can dent in the top picture has sharp edges and occurs on the bottom seam. In the bottom picture, the seam is peeled back again, compromising the can juncture. Please familiarize yourself with these examples of unsafe can dents. Let's review. Which of the following cans is unsafe? The correct answer is A, 
because it has a dent along the side seam. Let's discuss safe receiving of glass bottles and jars. First and foremost, never accept home canned or jarred food products. Always discard a bottle or jar where the glass is cracked or chipped, leaking or discolored. Check the vacuum pop-up button for evidence that the cap or seal has been opened. For bagged items, such as flour, rice, or sugar, always discard products that have rips, tears, or holes, unknown stains, or missing labels. <clears throat> For box items, such as cereal or crackers, please ensure the inner bag is intact. If the outside box is torn, but the inner bag is intact, then the product is safe. If there is no inner lining for box products such as pasta, always dispose of the product if the box has been open or torn. Food Link tracks all recalled items. If you receive a recalled item, we will inform you to remove it from your inventory and to please inform any clients if the item has already been distributed. Please keep an eye out on the online ordering system for New York State recalls. Have you noticed expired food coming from Foodlink? Have families asked why food is expired? If a product is past its expiration date, it is not necessarily bad. The quality, meaning the flavor, color, and texture may change but the safety of the product may be perfectly good. Assuming the food has been stored properly, many food items are safe, well beyond the dates marked. Please use the Food Keeper brochure to determine how long foods are still safe after their expiration dates and help educate clients when questions arise. This resource can be found on Foodlink's website. Once we've properly received the product, we now want to practice proper storage. We recommend using shelving that is easy to clean. In dry storage areas, food must be at least 6 inches off the floor. This allows you to be able to clean under shelving units. Furthermore, food should be 2 to 4 inches away from the wall. This prevents the product from getting wet should there be a leak in the ceiling and helps decrease changes in temperature if located on an outside wall. Always store cleaning supplies and chemicals away from food. Lastly, as discussed earlier, practice FIFO first in, first out to help keep product moving so that older product does not sit on the shelf too long. Only whole skin on fruit or vegetables such as apples, bananas, or oranges may be repackaged. Never repackage any processed foods such as cereal. Ensuring all food workers practice good personal hygiene can be your best line of defense against foodborne illness. This includes proper hand washing before handling any food products. Follow these steps for proper hand washing. Wet hands with warm water. Apply soap and wash your hands for 20 seconds. And be sure to get in between your fingers and under your nails. Rinse with warm water. Dry your hands with a disposable towel. And turn off the water faucet with your disposable towel to prevent recontamination. Always wash your hands after using the restroom, sneezing or coughing, handling raw food, smoking, eating or drinking, touching your hair, face, or clothing. Time to review. How long should you wash your hands for? The correct answer is B, 20 seconds, about how long it takes to sing happy birthday twice. 
Congratulations, we've now completed the basic food safety training. Please return to the Foodlink website and complete the quiz for backpack programs. Remember, you must receive a score of at least 80% to pass. You have an unlimited number of times to take the quiz. Once you have received an 80% or higher, Foodlink will send you a certificate of completion. We also encourage you as members of Foodlink to take advantage of our nutrition education programs. We offer a variety of nutrition and cooking classes. Please contact Alyssa Van Valkenburg to learn more and get connected with one of our educators. If you'd like to further your knowledge in food safety, Foodlink also offers Level 1 Food Manager and Level 2 Food Handler certification trainings. Please contact Emily Diaz to register for a class. Thank you for taking Foodlink's basic food safety course. You play a vital role in making sure that the food supply is safe to those you serve. Contact Laura Shigawala for additional information or questions regarding food safety.